Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, George Widom. Hi, this is George Widom reporting for Widom's World. This week we're doing something a little different, and I might do this more often as I get more materials in, but I'm going to do a product review. And some product that I've been waiting to demo for quite a long time since it was released is the Audient ID22. This is a, a very high quality audio interface, really of the best, best quality components, the best build quality I think I've seen in a long time. And, uh, but it's still something that is realistic that you could put in a home studio. I'm looking at the box if you're wondering what I'm staring at. It's just such a well-made piece of equipment and the software interface, which you'll see in a minute in, the, in a short demonstration, is really, really well thought out. Probably some of the best software, you know, console controls I've ever seen for a recording interface. I mean, these guys looked at everything else from the likes of Focusrite and Personas and Mo2 and DigiDesign, Avid, everybody, and said, wow, these are all too complicated. How can we make this easier? And I think they did a bang up job because there was nothing I needed to crack the manual to learn how to use in this thing. Really, really brilliant. So just as a quick summary of the functions and features of this unit, I'll just uh, look off the back. The unit has DSP low latency monitoring. It's not true zero latency monitoring, but it's so low that you would never notice. They call it DSP low latency because it's going through the console software internally, processing the audio and routing it to where it needs to go. Um, but it's completely configurable. You can choose exactly what you want to show on the screen at any one time. You can have a talk back. So let's say you're, you're going to run this thing in a home studio where you're going to have somebody else in a booth. You might have to coach or direct them. You can assign an input for a talk back and press an assignable button and have that key trigger the talk back mic. Pretty slick. Um, it's also got programmable dims and alternate speakers. So if you have two sets of studio monitors, you can choose between the two of them with this. And the dim button lets you turn down the volume of the monitors temporarily while someone's talking to you. The flexible and simple routing matrix, which lets you route outputs and save and recall settings, is pretty slick. So this thing, um, even though it's just sort of a, a looks like a simple two-in type of two-input device, it actually has the ability to route a lot more signal than just two inputs um, because it's got two pairs of send and returns, which you could use for effects loops if you wanted to. But those can also be used as two more pairs of aux in and outs. What could you use that for? Maybe a ISDN codec, maybe a discrete patch point to go to a foam patch or another input to your computer for Skype. I mean, you know, a lot of options there. And it's got two pairs of outputs. So you can w use one dedicated pair of outputs for another pair of studio monitors. And then you can use the second pair of dedicated outputs for who knows what else. Maybe you've got a secondary room you want to drive speakers in. This thing can do, you know, all that stuff. Plus it has optical in and out on ADAT connectors, which means it can send out and take in up to eight more channels of audio through those optical ADAT connectors. It's USB and it runs with a 1.5 amp power supply. Yeah, a real power supply. You have to plug it into the wall. This thing will not run on just USB power alone because the half of an amp that you get from USB is just not enough to drive the high quality AD converters, mic preamps, headphone amplifiers that are headphone amplifier that's built into this unit. So uh, overall, it's very impressively made. On the front panel, it's got uh, a row of switches that let you control numerous functions. It's got a high-pass filter switch, which I think is really handy, which will, will be in the demo you're going to hear in a minute. Phase controls, which really only matters if you're doing stereo mics and you have two mics recording in the same space. Uh, it's got a pad switch, so if you want to do a really loud shouting read, you can just flip the pad switch to minus 10 and then go back to a more normal read by disengaging the minus 10 dB pad. And naturally it has a 48 volt phantom power uh, control as well. 
all that is physical switches on the front panel. It's not stuff done in software. Oh, and also, it's got two inputs, six outputs in terms of AD converters. So while you can bring only two ins through the AD converters, with those aux sends and returns, you can route them in and out someplace else for just doing monitor mixing, which is really cool. And of course, it's 24-bit 96 kilohertz, which is pretty much the standard, you know, these days for pro audio gear. The preamps are made by Audient, and this company, this is really their first audio interface. Before this thing came out, they only made like really primo uh, mic preamps, AD converters, monitor controller systems, things like that. So this is really their quote unquote lowest end product. They're taking their, their expertise in those areas and bringing it to something that you can use in a home studio practically and affordably. This sucker is beautifully built. Again, it's made in the UK. The quality speaks for itself in regards to the audio quality. It is just absolutely pristine. Absolutely no problem with using this as a primary mic preamp and interface. If you have this, there's no reason to have any other mic preamp or AD converters for a voiceover, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, if you want to dirty up the signal, add some distortion, you know, things like that, tube noise, warm it up, you know, put it some kind of a, a preamp with a transformer and give it that kind of a woolly sound, whatever it is that you like to do to dirty up your sound. Of course, you can plug those devices into this thing. It'll work great. But if you just want clean, accurate voice recordings and you'd like to be able to use this to replace a traditional mixer in a home studio, you want to keep it compact. You don't want to have that Mackie board in the signal chain that could be dirtying up the signal. This thing is something you want to check out. So enough of me blabbing on about it. Why don't we watch this little video here? I recorded at Howard Kogan's studio, and you'll be able to see how the interface works at the same time. All right, who put Jack FM's bra in the freezer again? Uh, there's a word for Jack FM. It's Jack FM. Well, too bad this bunch of songs in a row will be your last. <laughs> That's depressing. It is. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Let me hear it again with the high pass filter on. So that was just flat. This is with high pass filter. All right, who put Jack FM's bra in the freezer again? There's a word for Jack FM. It's Jack FM. Too bad this bunch of songs in a row will be your last. All right, who put Jack FM's bra in the freezer again? So there you have it. I think this product is really fantastic. It's at a pretty aggressive price point in the $700 range. It's kind of falls short in one particular area, and that would be processing power. Until the uh, Apogee Apollo came out, there was nothing else that would touch this thing. But the Apogee Apollo Twin Solo, which is their desktop version of an interface, does have the added ability of doing real-time DSP effects plugins. So that's one area where that kind of trumps the audience. But then again, that device is only Mac compatible, and it's only Thunderbolt. This one is Mac or Windows compatible, and it's USB. So it's going to be a lot more widely compatible with a lot more systems. So anyway, there you have it. That's the Audient ID22. Beautiful made device. Um, if you're looking for something pristine with no bells and whistles in regards to processing because you already have your own processing or you're just going to do everything in your DAW anyway, this is definitely something to consider. It's a real nice centerpiece to, a, you know, to the professional voice actor's home studio and I would not hesitate to recommend it to anybody looking for something like this. So thanks for watching Wyndham's World. If you've got an idea for a product review or you'd like to have a question answered, this is where you're going to send it. Wyndham'sWorld at edgestudio.com. And if you'd like to get consulting, you know where to go. VOStudioTech.com is my home on the web for all things audio, voiceover, consulting, recording, tech support, studio design, acoustic booth tuning, twisted wave stacks. It goes on and on. Thanks again for watching. I appreciate your time. I'll see you guys next week.